Well, I guess if I'm going to be talking about life as a college student, it would only be fair to show you a picture of me when I was in college. That's me on the left right there. God, I miss that hair. Now, growing up, I grew up in a household that valued academics very strongly. We had a lot of other values, but academics was a big one. I'm not joking when I tell you that almost every person on my mom's side of the family was a physician, and almost every person on my dad's side of the family was an engineer. Well, that's a lie. There was my dad's brother. He was an engineer from Stanford and MIT, but then he decided he didn't want to be an engineer. So guess what he became? A doctor. Entering into college, I knew that one of those two was going to be my path. I went back and forth between which one. Then, suddenly, in my sophomore year, my life changed. During that Christmas break, I tragically lost my older brother. To say that event changed my life would be an understatement. I remember walking around campus that following spring like it was yesterday. To my right, there were two people sitting down on a beautiful day outside. They were sitting outside on a bench, eating and laughing. And to my left, there was a guy feeding one of those squirrels on campus that would come eat out of your hand. I remember thinking to myself, why is any of this important? Sure as hell wasn't important to me. I was in therapy at the time dealing with the immense amount of grief that I had been going through. I ultimately decided I needed to take that semester off to figure some things out and get myself together. Well, I did figure something out. I wasn't a doctor or an engineer. I'm a therapist. I work primarily with adolescents and young adults dealing with a host of issues. As an adolescent, I was in therapy quite a bit, and I remember really struggling to find a therapist that I could connect with. And when I finally found that person, it was a game changer. And that's what I wanted to be for other people. I'm here today to talk about redefining success and how we can prioritize our mental health. But why am I here at Rice University giving this talk? Because I believe that college students are faced with a very unique set of challenges, from higher academic demands to probably living on your own for the first time to making new social connections. Let's be real. College can be tough. The pressure to succeed can be overwhelming. But would you agree with me if I said that college wasn't just about, or college wasn't just about getting the grade, landing the perfect internship, or having a large social media following? What if success is about so much more than that? What if success isn't just about the destination, but rather the journey? In our society, success is often defined by external factors, such as wealth, fame, social status. Now, those could be some of the ingredients, but what about our internal success, our peace, our well-being, our mental health? Sometimes it's like we don't even consider those things. The great Bob Marley once said, some people are so poor that all they have is money. I believe that true success is when we find the balance between the internal and the external. To highlight the point that internal success is just as important as external. Let's take a look at a few stats. In a study published in the Journal of American College Health, they found that students with higher rates of mental health issues had lower GPAs than those with less. The study goes on to say that those who actually sought help for their mental health problems had a roughly 10% higher GPA than those who didn't. Furthermore, a study by the WHO found that for every $1 we invest in the treatment of common mental health disorders, there's a, four there's a $4 return in overall health and productivity. So, 
what do I mean when I tell you to prioritize your mental health? Well, I'll tell you what I don't mean. I don't mean sitting around and meditating all day or talking about your feelings nonstop. Because, let's be real, that would get annoying real quick. But there are some things that you can do. Start by acknowledging that it's okay to not be perfect. It's important to recognize that college is a challenging time for many students. I think most people would agree when I say that college is a time for learning and growth. So I guess if you're feeling stressed out academically, socially, or financially, or you feel like this, then you're probably doing something okay. It's important to be kind to ourselves, though, and to allow ourselves to learn from our mistakes. Studies have shown that self-compassion, the practice of treating ourselves with kindness and understanding, can lead to better mental health outcomes and increased resilience in the face of stressors. By recognizing our imperfections and practicing self-compassion, we can build a better relationship not just with ourselves, but with our college experiences. Now, I know that sometimes as humans we hear what we want to hear, so let me expand. I am not saying take it easy on yourself. I want us to be hard on ourselves and to strive for big things. But being hard on yourself and being harsh with yourself are two totally different things. I can be hard on myself and still be kind but it's really hard for me to be harsh and kind. Now, secondly, let's focus on self-care. That means taking care of ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually. Getting a good night's sleep, that can help with things like memory consolidation, cognitive performance, and reduce the risk of things like heart disease, obesity, or diabetes. Meditating for five to 10 minutes a day has been shown to reduce stress, improve focus, and increase feelings like empathy and compassion. Now tell me, how useful would that be on that day that you have two tests, a paper, and a shift at your part-time job? Now this one's gonna be hard, but I encourage you all to try it. Taking a cold shower for two to three minutes a day has been shown to increase dopamine levels leading to mood enhancement and increased cognitive performance and increasing alertness, more than any cup of coffee can do. But I don't have time for this. I'm too busy, I have a test. My answer to that is consistency does not mean perfection. Now third, let's prioritize our relationship. Go grab coffee with a friend. Go out on that date. Call your parents. I don't care. Just connect with another human. Building and maintaining healthy relationships can have a profound impact on our mental health. Personally, the relationships I have in my life are the reason I'm standing here today. They're the people that I've celebrated with, cried to, yelled at, and traveled with. They're the people that supported me when I made poor decisions. They're the people that love me when it's hard to love myself. Fourth, let's talk about setting goals. Now we've all heard the advice, it's important to set realistic goals. But what does that mean? I mean, is it realistic to say, I wanna become the next Jordan, Oprah, or Gates? I mean, sure, but I don't even know that those people knew that they would be who they ended up being today. So why is it important to set realistic goals? Well, if I set a goal that's too high, I might be setting myself up for failure. But if I set a goal that's challenging but realistic, I'm more likely to feel motivated and accomplished when I reach it. Now, I'm not going to be the one to tell you what's realistic and what's not, because everyone's different. But to give you an example or an exercise in identifying 
try using the SMART acronym, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time Bound. And fifth, seek help when you need it. There's no shame in asking for help. That can mean talking to a professional, family or friends, or even joining a support group. Talking to a professional can not only give us insight into ourselves, but it can also give us a form of accountability that we may struggle to ask for from others. Now, making changes can be easier said than done. It's easy to fall into old habits, and it can be hard to crawl out of them. But here's the thing. It takes time patience, and effort to build new habits. It's about making small, intentional changes in our daily lives that can make a big difference. For example, instead of scrolling through your phone an hour before bed, try meditating for five minutes. You can still scroll for 55 minutes afterwards. Instead of saying yes to every social event, try prioritizing the events you really want to attend and saying no to the ones that don't align with your value. And instead, engage in a healthy habit or a hobby. So, how do we make these changes stick? That is ultimately the key. I tell my clients this all the time. I'm not really interested if you can do these hard things when you feel like it. Anybody can do something when they feel like it. I'm more interested in can you do these hard things on the days you absolutely don't feel like it. Because that is when the change really happens. Here are a few tips. Start by tracking your progress. The things that we measure are the things that we can improve on. That can mean keeping a journal, or a log, or using one of those apps that tracks your routines and habits. By measuring and tracking my progress, I can start to see how far I've come and what work still needs to be done. Secondly, for the love of God, guys, write things down. There are so many things that require our attention. Think of your mind like a plot of real estate. Everything we have to do or remember takes up space. By writing things down, I can temporarily free up that space and come back to it when I need to. So how many times have you had, you're going to bed, you put your head down on that pillow at night, you're thinking about your day, and then you have that moment where you're like, oh no, I forgot about fill in the blank. Now, ultimately, I don't know that we'll ever fully eliminate those moments because that would take perfection. But we can greatly reduce them if we write things down. And finally, celebrate your successes. If this whole thing is about balance and I'm gonna get down on myself for my failures, well, I should counter that with celebration of my successes. It's important to celebrate our successes no matter how small you may think they are. Now, how many times, well, but what about the pressure to succeed? What about the competitive nature of college and the job market? You're right, college and the job markets are very competitive, and the pressure to succeed can be overwhelming. But here's the thing, success is subjective. What success means to you may not mean the same thing to another. Think about this for a second. If I told you the following lines, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more, or just do it, I would imagine you know what those slogans are. Why? Because we've heard them over and over and over again. The same is true for what we believe about success. I mean, how many times have I heard something to the effect of, do this or do that, and if you don't, you'll find yourself flipping burgers for the rest of your life. So at the end of the day, 
we have to define success on a regular basis for us so that we can reinforce it. So let's strive for balance, happiness, and fulfillment in all areas of our life. And let that be our measure for success. Remember, it's about making small intentional changes in our daily lives that can have a big impact. So let's take care of ourselves, let's take care of each other, and let's redefine success together. Thank you.